Talking Hollywood royalty, our next guest has to be the Queen. We've discovered a new star, Jane Fonda. I think you'll agree with me that her effect is immediate and electric. When Jane Fonda made her big screen debut in 1960, the world fell in love. We're friends. Oh, we can, we can be better friends than that. From black and white to colour, Jane's credits quickly added up, scoring her two Academy Awards for Best Actress. I'm so happy. In the 1980s, she revolutionised fitness with Jane Fonda's workout. 17 million copies of the VHS tape ended up in homes around the world. Are you ready? Yeah! <laughs> More recently, the energetic 80-year-old has been starring alongside Lily Tomlin in Grace and Frankie. Do you two know how lucky you are to have each other? Yeah, I think we do. And now, in the era Jane calls her third act, she's back on the big screen for Book Club. I would like to introduce you to Christian Grey. Oh, no. We started this book club to stimulate our minds. From what I hear, this book is quite stimulating. Together with Diane Keaton, Candace Bergen and Mary Steenburgen, the four fabulous friends are spicing things up. I mean, if women our age were meant to have sex, God wouldn't do what he does to our bodies. Whoa. Well, speak for yourself. Well, that was not God. That was Dr. Nazari. I can't believe that I'm sitting next to Jane Fonda. This is uh, such a thrill for me. What's the secret? You are the most stunning person on the planet. <laughs> well, thank you, given... What are we, chopped liver? No, no. <laughs> really? I'm really sorry, Lise, but compared to Jane Fonda, yeah. <laughs> Controversial. <laughs> you are absolutely incredible. Are you feeling as great as you look? Uh, I'm feeling pretty great. Yeah? Yeah. Good. I love being here in Australia. I like Australia. I spent yesterday walking around Sydney and having a good time. Where did you go? Well, we, we walked all over the place. I went to the zoo. Not the big one. I've been there before, but the little one that's near the wax museum. Mm -hmm. And because I love the animals you have here. I love going someplace where the animals are different than where they are back home. And you know what my favorite is? The kookaburro. I love that bird. <laughs> <laughs> you We've just got... renamed it. But yeah. It's so much better. <laughs> We've got a teacher to say it with an Aussie accent. Kookaburra. Kookaburra. Hey. Yeah. That's Kookaburra. Just about your brand new film, Book Club. Yeah. Um, it's fabulous. Saw it last week. It is fabulous. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's really funny. But it's not really about books, is it? It's about sex <laughs> and friendship, oh. women's friendship. You know you would sell so many more tickets if you called it Sex Club. <laughs> <laughs> that is the nice thing about it. It's is definitely about female friendship. <laughs> that got awkward. And did you walk away with three new friends? Yeah. Or were you already mates yeah. with Diane, no. Candace and Mary? We hardly knew each other. Really? And, and um... And we, yes, we left friends. We've continued to be friends and we see each other. And that's one of the reasons we wanted, I think, I know for me, I wanted to make the movie because I wanted to get to know these women. What was it like on set with those three? Oh, we had such a good time. I can see we that. We had such a good time. You've, you've actually always been a wonderful champion of women. I was looking at something um, just yesterday, a beautiful speech that Meryl Streep gave a couple of years ago, honouring you. Um, I think you were going into the Hall of Fame or something. And she told a story about how you two worked together, one of her very first movies. It was her first movie. And yeah. as soon as you came off set, you went straight back to Hollywood and said, you need to know about this young actor called Meryl Streep. How hard is it to have female friendships in Hollywood? It's such a comp competitive space. Oh, it's... It's not hard at all. It, what's hard is to remain friends with people you've worked with because, you know, you, you spend two or three months together or nowadays even less than that and, and it's very intense and then it's over and you never see each other again. But if you are intentional, and I think the older you get, the more you realize how important friendships are and so you become much more intentional. And we, the four of us, Candy, Mary, Diane and I, decided we were going to really be intentional about staying in touch. And so I had a party and they all came over to my house and we all got drunk and <laughs> had a good time. I, um, Jane, I have something to show you, but I'm, I'm now... <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm now, I'm now you really... show me yours and I'll... <laughs>
Don't encourage him, Jane. Don't encourage him. It's the influence of the movie. <laughs> that, that moment will stay with me for the rest of my life. <laughs> I, um, I strangely, you, you might not guess this, but I grew up watching your workout videos because my mum would work out to your workout videos every day and they were always fun and then as a little kid I, I would play along with them. Um, I decided to relive those days and so I, I, I chucked one on today and ha had a go and I want to see if you could give me some... Uh, Feedback. Okay, let, me, let me see. Ready, oh. 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 I mean... Oh. What do you think of the form? I think the form is pretty good. It's not all of you, Tommy. Okay. Advertising going on there, Tony? No, yeah, that's a good tattoo, but it's only on one arm. That's from elbow to wrist. I've never seen He's that. He's saving his other arm for a tattoo of you, Jane. Uh -huh. <laughs> I will get the other arm done for you this week. Okay. Uh, All right. We you. need to take a short break. We'll be right back with Jane Fox. <laughs> here with Jane Fonda. Now, Jane, I know you're getting out and about and having a look around Sydney, but tomorrow night you're doing something very special. I know. I'm scared to death. <laughs> Tell us what you're doing. I'm, <clears throat> well, I'm on a speaking tour, and tomorrow I'm speaking at the Opera House. Ooh. And, I mean, wow. it's, it's like this iconic place, and I'm scared to death. And what are it's... you talking about? Myself, of course. <laughs> <laughs> It's called An Evening with Jane Fonda, so I, I'm talking about yeah. myself. But you shouldn't be scared. You're an icon. Yeah. It's, a, yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's icon. just an icon in another icon. That's fine. Yeah. What a nice thing to say. Hey, Jane, speaking of icons, you know, you were famous for your activism, particularly back in the 60s and so on, as you were for your acting, and particularly about being anti-Vietnam War. Now, John McCain has died today. I know. I'm so sad. What would you say about John McCain? I, I think that he was a very brave man. I think he was a, he was, he had every reason not to like me. And yet, when asked, he stood up for me. And I really respect him for that. I respect him for what he went through when he was there. And um, he was a maverick like me. <laughs> What's not to like? Absolutely, yeah. No. yeah. It is amazing to hear you say that. You said he stood up for you, what did he do? Well, no, he just, somebody asked, I was on a show like this, yeah. and Chris Matthews actually had asked him what he thought of me, and, um, and he said something, you know, kind of nice, and it showed on television, and it surprised me, and I was, I was you know, the, what I don't like about him is that he chose Sarah Palin for a running mate. That was a big mistake. <laughs> Not a right? smartest move. Yeah. <laughs> um, Australia wouldn't do it. <laughs> Before we finish up, let's get back to you. Finish the up? New movie. I just arrived. <laughs> <laughs> you can stay on that, Jane. Seriously. Oh. oh. I, I've got nothing else on. I'm happy to stick around. <laughs> um, let's talk about Book Club. It, it's okay. a great movie. There's also, I noticed, I think literally every scene you have a drink in your hand. I know. Was that in the script or did yes. you just. Um... It was in the script. Oh, it was. Okay. Yeah, and, and the fact is, it's not real. It's oh, really? grape juice. I mean, look, oh. you, you, sh you know, you're on the set doing a scene over and over and over and over. And over. If it was real, we'd all be on our faces at the end. Of the <laughs> no, it's after when the whole, you know, when the day's over, then the martinis come out and everything like that. Do, do, you, get, um, do you get hung <laughs> over at all? Hmm? Do you get hung over at all with, you know, if you have a martini or two, do you find it a bit of a struggle the next day? Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so great. Can we, can we ask what's happening in this Instagram post um, that you posted a, a few months back? We're about to show uh -oh. you now. It's coming. Oh, what's oh, going on? Oh, yeah. Oh, I love this. What happened I here? I have no shame. What happened <laughs> was, see, I live alone now. I've had three husbands and I'm finally on my own. And I went to this fancy party with this incredible sequin dress and I got home and I couldn't, I couldn't unzip it. I, I just couldn't. I, uh, I couldn't do it. Need help, Tommy. And I had nobody to unzip it for oh, me, so I slept Lord. in it. So how'd you get out of it? <laughs> <laughs> and so I had somebody take my picture the next morning when they came to my house and I was in my kitchen looking so terrible with my dress still on. That's cool. You don't look terrible, can it's I just say? not a very say. funny, huh? You do not look terrible in that photo. Uh, Thank yeah, you. I, I love the way you can find someone to take a photograph but not to take the dress off, but, but there you go, that's good. Yeah. I'd never thought we'd live in a world where
where Jane Fonda couldn't find someone to take her dress off. <laughs> Now and details on an evening with Jane Fonda are on our <laughs>